is it is it clear to come out now? It it's Halloween and I decided to review a spooky game. I don't really do spooky games. Okay, just toughen up. <sighs> Today we'll be looking at Cry of Fear. <laughs> Play as Simon, a young man that seems to just want to get home. While walking the streets late at night, Simon runs across the man crawling and begging for help. Simon rushes to his aid, then a car with an unknown driver speeds out of control and rams into Simon, knocking him out instantly. After some weird imagery, he wakes up in an alley. Now he must traverse the city and solve some puzzles to make your way home and figure out what is even happening in this town. Monsters? Is Simon going insane? The atmosphere of the town is spot on. Sometimes you'll feel at ease in some areas, only to turn the corner into some monsters or new area that forces you to be cautious. Despite the game running on the Gold Source engine and the graphics sometimes looking quite old, it still nails the consistent aesthetic through the entire game. Atmosphere is enhanced by the sound design. Every place has an amazing feel to it, as well as the enemies that can give off a horrific cry upon death. The voice acting is... well... What the hell are you doing here? Well, hi, Simon. It has its charm. Ah, yes. Don't forget about the jump scares. Starting off, you only get a knife. It's a very weak weapon. But you also get a phone with a flashlight. That'll give you some story progression along the way. And some puzzle solving. There's a dash mechanic that allows you to get a hit in, and then you can dash back. Eventually, you will collect guns that will store in your very limited inventory space. Limited ammo will be supplied too. Thankfully, that doesn't take up inventory space. So you must shoot wisely. Very, very Resident Evil-like. Fighting monsters is one of the main things of this game. Each monster has their own way of attacking. Basic ones might just walk forward and then take swings at you. Others may sprint at you and kill themselves to deal damage. Figuring out how to deal with these enemies is key to winning the game. In some sections, you could skip an entire batch of enemies if you don't want to waste ammo. Other times, you'll be solving puzzles. Sometimes the puzzles will be collecting clues for a code that is needed for a specific part of the puzzle. Sometimes it's an environmental puzzle to solve, or even an enemy puzzle to solve, where you must run away or fight a large number of enemies if it's worth it. A single player game can't exist without bosses of some kind. Near the end of each chapter, you'll run into bosses that have their own mechanics and methods to defeat them. Figure out how to deal with them and then go at them. For example, on the first boss, I wanted to keep all my ammo. And then I realized that the boss has an extremely slow swing speed. So I decided to beat him with only my knife. And it worked out pretty well. <laughs> The game has a decently long campaign to explore. Once finished, the challenges of the puzzles and the surprises may be gone, but it can be fun to take on the higher difficulty modes. Some puzzles will change their answers, so you can't just breeze through them if you remember the answers from before. Modes will be unlocked once you complete the game, as well as some collectibles that you can find throughout the game. Oh, and there's a co-op mode too. Uh, let, let's check it out. Uh, oh. Regardless, multiple endings and many things to collect, you could find yourself enjoying a second playthrough. Old doesn't always mean bad. You can have an old game be so good that it transcends time because of how well it's designed. I believe Cry of Fear may be an example of one of these games. It's solid with some roughness that doesn't take away from the experience. Looks like we found ourselves a gem. Such a fantastic game at a low price of free. You should play it, if you dare. Ah!